In the past month, I have reviewed countless Etsy shops and their listings. And from reviewing those listings, I've been able to narrow down what is causing a lot of Etsy sellers to not only see no sales, but also hurt their shops in total by doing these common mistakes. Before we get too far into this video, the first question that a lot of people have is, okay, so if I've had a listing that's been up for, let's say a few months, and I'm not seeing sales, would you recommend fixing this listing or just creating a new listing? A lot of the times my answer is create a new listing. One of the reasons why is because if we know how the Etsy algorithm works, what Etsy does in their algorithm is they assign your listing a quality score over time. So if your listing has already gotten that quality score, if you are not running ads, driving your own external traffic through maybe social media or out outside external ads as well to that listing, that listing is not going to grow organically if you fix it because Etsy has already assigned those values to that listing, which in turn makes it just not worth your time to edit and adjust that listing. For a moment, I wanna take a brief moment just to say thank you all for those who watch these videos, subscribe and like this channel. If you would like to have more support from me directly and have a community community of like-minded Etsy and print on demand sellers, I do invite you to my membership called the Best Seller Insider Membership. Within that membership, you have the ability to win free shop reviews from me. I typically give that out every other month or so to review members shops who join challenges and contests that we host. So if you are looking for a membership to challenge you and keep you accountable to your goals, I highly recommend that membership. It's designed to to get you some real result in your business. And we've had so many students who have gotten really great listings up and created from the challenges. And some of those listings have gotten sellers multiple daily sales. So that's really cool to stay at this stage of running that membership for a few months now. Besides that, let's hop straight into it. So we're diving deep into this right off the jump. And the first listing mistake that I see, which is probably the largest mistake of all mistakes that I'm gonna to talk about today is photo card selection. This is something that I don't think I've really touched base on yet because I personally just this new year alone in 2024 is kind of just a lot of new things in the world of AI that I'm still trying to <laughs> create my own opinion on because here's the thing. First off, I support the use of of AI created and generated images. Sometimes there's going to be times that you have to use an AI generated image, right? The only problem I have, and probably not only problem, I have I have multiple problems. One of the biggest problems that I have seen for Etsy sellers in specific is that quite frankly, I've seen a lot of listings that use all AI generated images can significantly, significantly hurt your shop and all the listings that you have AI generated mockups almost instantly breaks trust with a customer and kills your conversion rate. What I have seen in the consumer world is that right now, a lot of consumers are very, very, very vigilant in not purchasing from shops that they think are maybe fake or maybe drop shipped or just anything that makes them feel weird about purchasing. They instantly want to pull away and not support that business because it doesn't look like a small business to them. What I recommend here is buying real life photo mockups. With all that being said, one of my favorite quotes on this channel, I should make my own t-shirt for that. Honestly, I should. But with all that being said, guys, I will say that AI mockups tend to be not actually the product. They can also cause a false color of a product and also to note that it is against Etsy's house policies to have photos that are not actually showing the product itself. And um, on top of all that, it's just, in my opinion, just not worth it. It's not converting. Like I'm, I'm not gonna lie, some AI mockups are scarily so good that I cannot even tell. And sometimes I like, I squint at them. I think more than ever, we do need to support those real mockup photo 
mock-up shops and that's really really important as we go forward so just keep that in mind that your photo cards are one of the biggest players in getting you sales the second thing that is killing a lot of etsy shops is the main mock-up photo selected and how we are zooming in on that main mock-up photo. So when you are zooming in on your mock-up images, I want you to think of your listings and that main mock-up image as maybe the only thing the customer will see without the title. So they're going to see that on the page of search without the title and ask yourself the question, do you know what product that you are selling without the title? Do you know maybe the niche and the design? Can you read it clearly? You don't want to zoom in too far that it looks like you're selling an SVG template or a digital file, but you don't want to zoom out to the point that on scroll, a customer can't even read the phrase. Your customers are very, very visual when they're shopping. And although you might have the best SEO on the planet, what they're looking at is that main thumbnail image. They're not looking looking at your title and making sure that you spelled all the words right. They want a product, right? And a lot of the times they're going to be looking at that main mock-up photo. As far as zooming in goes, what I personally like to do in my zooming and I'm going to show on the side of the screen here or in an overlay is typically you just want the shoulders in view and then maybe the edges of the shirt and give some give a little bit of room. But as far as other products like a mug or drinkware or ornament. Now ornaments don't have four corners, but I hope that just makes sense at least that we're leaving space in the four corners just slightly to show the product itself. Again, if that confuses the customer or it's hard to read, you're going to get scrolled past and that can really kill that Etsy listing in the long run. So this is something that Etsy recently brought up as a new change as far as visibility goes. And one thing I also wanted to touch on talking about mock-up images. So the mock-up images as well, you want high resolution and you do not want to be using a photo collage in that first image. Now, what are the swap outs if let's say you have a front and back type of t-shirt that you want to show the front of the t-shirt and the back of the t-shirt? Now, what I recommend is doing some type of circle and I'm going to show my example on the screen here of how I would do this. And one of the reasons why Etsy doesn't want the photo collage is because sometimes that can be confusing to a customer customer and it's easier to scroll past. That's why you want the actual product in the middle of the screen and then a tiny little corner maybe circle that's going to showcase the back print or maybe the wraparound print of a mug as example. So the next one on my list is relevancy. This is a huge problem I'm seeing with a lot of listings as of recently that I've noticed the relevancy of the product that a seller is creating is not relevant to the description tags and title that they are creating. And that cause of that disconnect of relevancy can make or break an Etsy listing from not only organically reaching customers, but also if you're paying for ads, the product itself is not relevant to the tags and title and SEO you're crafting and creating. You're not going to get sales. As an example, I've seen a like bird watching niche tote bag as example, and someone put Mother's Day gift as the bird watching tote bag SEO. And while this could be a gift for a mother, I don't want to discount that, this probably isn't the right place to put that SEO. And what I would suggest to someone is maybe the types of bird, the hobbies that are adjacent to bird watching, right? Maybe animal lover or pet lover. You guys get what I'm saying as far as maybe like nature lover, that would be better SEO. That's going to be relevant to that product type. Now, let's say that maybe there is a bird lover that's a mom. You know, that's fine. Etsy's probably gonna match. If someone is typing on Etsy, bird lover, they're going to find your tote bag or even if they put bird lover mom, just keep that in mind. Relevancy is a big thing. And this is the second layer I'm gonna get a little bit deeper into this video on, which is your design and phrases, maybe color combinations and color selection of your product may not align with the niche that you are designing for. So just keep in mind, this all has to be cohesive right? You want your SEO, your niche, your product, the 
colors that you're selecting, all of that to flow together. And with that, that can increase your sales over time because the thing is customers are buying things that are relevant to them or the customer that they are gifting to, right? That's why relevancy is so important. I really hope that drives that whole example home, even though I still like, I feel like I should have, I should have done research. I should have, I should have researched the bird watching niche. The next listing mistake that I am seeing is that the perceived value of a listing does not match the actual value of a listing and what a lot of people and sellers are pricing their products for. There's customer perceived value and seller perceived value, right? You know that in your head, you should be making $10 of profit per a Bell and Canvas 3001 t-shirt. You feel like your product is worth that amount. Now, when a customer comes to your listing and maybe they look at your listing and they're kind of like, I don't know, this, this doesn't look like it's $25 or worth $25. They probably aren't going to pay for that product, right? And this is where it's really important to take a second and talk about about how reviews impact your listing. Again, going back to photo cards, that impacts your listing. The market prices and just the marketplace averages that you see in your competition and how you can price. So if you find that you have new listings, you're new to Etsy and you have no shop reviews, no sales at all, that does lower your perceived value of listings. And this is where I recommend doing price staggering and my price staggering method. One one of the reasons why I recommend this is to not undercut the market. That's not the goal of price staggering by any means. When you're starting out, you have lower conversion rates, you have lower trust with your buyers or potential buyers, right? When they go to your listings, even if they like the product, if they check out your reviews, see that they, you don't have any, you don't have any sales, they are less likely to meet you in the middle, so to speak, and extend the hand in purchasing from your shop. And that's where you can kind of meet them in the middle and pricing and maybe lower your pricing point. So sometimes it's better to try to lower your profit margins in the beginning and slowly increase as you see reviews and sales come through. Here's the last mistake that I have seen with Etsy sellers who are not seeing sales. As of recently, I have stumbled across maybe a few listings here or there that people have came to me and told me, hey, I'm not seeing sales. I have a similar design to another Etsy seller. It's different, but it's pretty similar. And why am I not getting sales, but they're getting sales? And here is a concept that I wanted to dive deep into. With print on demand, there are so many listings now that look very similar. And that's not a good thing by any means. It, it's kind of a fine line. They're copying but not copying listings and this is a time and a place that you need to add market value and create your own unique footprint as far as your design goes and your designs that you're creating because yes there is some degree of trends that work for people and if you hop into trends at certain times and do something slightly different and unique to the market you're going to see sales but when it's too alike you're going to have a lot of issues and not only issues but you could face some legal problems too right because that's the whole copycat culture that we see on Etsy and customers are always looking for something new that's different than the rest right so you want to be maybe that shiny rock or you want to be the conch I don't know I don't know where I'm going with with this example, but I have seen some designs I've made in the past that are just all across Etsy now. <laughs> One of my tote bag designs I did in the past, I looked it up and it became a popular item on Etsy for another seller and they took my exact design and I'm not going to show them in this video because I don't want them to get hate, but like it is technically like very, very much not allowed. Um, I did not allow them. If you've watched this point, don't forget to type in the comment section this definitely killed my listing and I will heart it and know that you watched to this point. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, like the video, and I'll see you in the next one here.